Jackie Lou, warm, gotta pick a side. Pick a side. Who am I? But, but before y'all, but okay, y'all say y'all boyfriend and girlfriend then. Yeah. Does God honor boyfriend and girlfriend? Well, not really. I don't, I don't not really? So why, why are you guys boyfriend and girlfriend? You guys say you're Christian, you believe in the Bible, you believe in God, but yet everything you say, you're doing contrary to God. And I understand, sis. You know why you do that? Because of this. Yeah. Right. This man taught you that's okay. But what the Bible say? Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Three. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. So guess what? Does God honor boyfriend and girlfriend or marriage? Marriage. marriage. So you, there should be no boyfriend and girlfriend. And the Bible is called courting or proving. Proving meaning what? You have supervision, right? And guess what? You're getting to know one another and you're making sure, guess what? That you have to make sure that he fears God and he's going to fulfill his role as a man, as a leader, right? And then he has to prove you that you're going to keep the commandments and that you're going to submit unto him. But there's no boyfriend and girlfriend. There's no touching and holding hands. There's no kissing. There's no, uh, there's not doing, there's no sex. There's none of that stuff. There's no boyfriend. There's proving y'all getting to know each other to decide if you're going to marry. Because marriage, how, how long is marriage supposed to last? Till you die. For, yeah, till you die forever. There's no divorce in the Bible. The only way you divorce, if, if the woman steps out and commits adultery. That's the only way you can divorce. Other than that, you got to stay together. There's no divorce. Huh? Guys do cheat on the females. Yeah, guys. God does what on the females? Cheat on the females. God cheats on the females? Yeah. Well, what do you mean God cheats on the females? Yeah. Oh, you said guys. Yeah. Men. Okay, yeah. Give me, uh, Mac give me Matthew 19. So, is that okay, though, sis? No, it's not okay. It's not okay. And God, listen. And God is not okay with that either. But, but. We're going to see what the Bible says about that. Leviticus 9, uh, no, Matthew 19 and verse 9. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 9. Three. And I say no, unto no, no, no. Uh, verse 8. Verse, no, verse 7. Verse 7. They say unto him, why did my... Oh, start at verse... Shoot. First, start at verse 4. Verse 4. Huh? And he answered and said unto them, huh? have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So it says God made male and female. There's only two genders. There's no bisexual, bi-gender, cisgender, all that crap they make up, the LGBTQ, guess what? They don't repent, they're going to die if they don't repent, right? Read. And said, for this cause, huh? shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. So you, a man, he's going to leave his mother and father, and the woman's going to leave her mother and father, and they're going to cleave to them and become husband and wife, married. Not boyfriend and girlfriend, sis. Not boyfriend and girlfriend. Right? Read. And they twain shall be, shall be one flesh. Uh -huh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Uh -huh. the, what therefore God that joined together, let no man put us under. So if you guys are getting married under the God's laws commandment, not under the white man, you know what I'm saying? Right? Under how God told you to get married, guess what? He put that together. But if you do it any type of other way, God didn't put that together. Right? Read. They say unto him, uh -huh. why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement uh -huh. and to put her away. Uh -huh. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, uh -huh. suffered you to put away your wives. Uh -huh. But from the beginning, it was not so. So before Christ came on the scene, Moses allowed the Israelites, the allowed the men to divorce their wives. Like for an example, if you got married, if a man got married and said he didn't like the way she was cooking, he's like, man, I'm getting a divorce. I don't want to deal with her no more. Or her big toe is too big. I don't want to marry her. No I, I, I don't want to deal with her. I'm giving her a divorce. Or her breast stink. I don't want to, I don't want to be with her no more. I'm going to get her a divorce. Right? Because we was wicked. We wasn't right, sis. I'm, I'm not saying all the men are right, sis. I'm not saying they were all right. We was messed up in the head, too. But Christ was saying it wasn't supposed to be like that. Because when, when Eve messed up in the garden, right, when she sinned, did, did Adam and Eve get a divorce? No, they stayed together, meaning they had to work with the problems that they had. Hey. Now, let's see further what Christ said. Read. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Except it be for what, sis? 
You got to pay attention. See, you're not paying attention. Read it again from the top, verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So what's the only reason why a man could put his wife away, get a divorce? If the woman commits what? Huh? No, if a woman commits what? Fornication. Or she steps out on her husband, commits adultery. If she goes, if you're married, if a woman is married and, married and goes lay down with another man, guess what? He is supposed to divorce her. You do not take her back. There's no, oh, I forgive her and she can come. No, it's a wrap. You get a divorce, no more. That's right. But anything outside of that, a man cannot divorce his wife. Right. Unless she st stops keeping the commandments and denies the faith. That's a different story. But if she commits fornication, right? If she commits fornication and lays with another man, he's supposed to divorce her and not take her back. Right. He's not supposed to take her back. Now, so to go back to what you're saying, sis, when it comes to marriage, first of all, there's no boyfriend and girlfriend. You got to prove, right? And I'm telling you right now, sis, you're telling me that you haven't laid down with a man. I'm saying this. A lot of boy, a lot of men, sis, I got a question for you. Are you What's your nationality? Um, well, according to America, African -American. African American. So I'm going over with my sister Brianna, right? About boyfriend and girlfriend. You got a boyfriend, sis? No, it's not prohibited. It's not prohibited according to what? God, right? So he, so he doesn't act, uh, acknowledge boyfriend and girlfriend. You got a, a boyfriend? No. Okay. So God said in Hebrews 13 and 4 that he said that he said God honors marriage, right? There's no boyfriend and girlfriend before you get married, right? Because what happens in boyfriend girlfriend relationships? Breaking up, but what else? What, what, what do you mean say adultery, fornication, right? Fornication, um, lust, because God awesome. says that you should marry somebody according to who they are oh, okay. as a person. You shouldn't marry them for looks. If you, like in America, most women out here, we walk, we have our boobs out, our butt out, these mm. PBLs, mm -hmm. and men look at that. Right. And they're lustful. They're more attracted to you for what you look like and not what you have in your head. That's why God says you're supposed to cover up, honestly. You're supposed to cover your hair as a woman. Yep. People think that just, you know, Muslims or uh, people that are practicing Christianity, some of them cover up, but it's for God's to be. All of us as women are supposed to cover ourselves. Right. So men can right, stand on. us and love us for who they are, not for what they Right, good. Since what's your name? Kilani and Brianna. Watch. I'm reading this Hebrews 13 and 4. One more time. Hebrews 13 and 4. You're right, sis. But that's biblical. That comes out the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Read that one more time. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. in the bed undefiled. What you and your husband do in the bed is all good, as long as y'all not having sex while you're on your cycle, right? Read. But whoremongers uh -huh. and adulterers, God will judge. So whoremongers and adulterers, is that what? Boyfriend and girlfriend. You sleeping around men, men to men to men, or woman to woman to woman. That's whoremonger and adulterer. God's going to judge you. How will God judge you? Okay, before that, can he judge you before you die? Yeah. How? Uh -huh. So he practically wears the shingles. He the shingles? Fringes. No, the fringes. I call them shingles. All right. But um, he, taught, he taught me everything that I know. Hey, brother, come close. Come close, brother. So it's like, God, you can't ask God to forgive you for your sin. But most people, they think, oh, I just ask him and it's done. It don't work like that. Forgiveness is repenting and not continuing to do your sins over and over. Okay, I'm going to show you how God's going to judge you, right? There's a way to judge you. Deuteronomy 20 and 16. My brother. Question, you got a girlfriend? You dealing yes, with a girl? You ain't dealing with no, how old are you? 16. 16? You in high school still? Yeah. So we ain't dealing with no woman? You sure? It's me right now. It's just you right now. But have right you now. in the past? Yes. Okay, all right, look what the Bible says. Remember the Jews read Hebrews 13 and 4 that God will judge adulterers and hormones, those who sleep around, boyfriend, girlfriend, stuff. God's gonna judge you. Here's how you would judge you, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Yeah. Also every sickness uh -huh. and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, uh -huh. them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. My brother, uh, what's your name? Jason. Jason, Kalani. Brianna. Brianna. Hold on, Brianna. Hold on, Brianna. Brianna, Kalani, Jason. Y'all read the Bible before, right? Okay. Where in the Bible do you read about AIDS? Huh? Um, when God gave the plague to, who was that? Egypt. Did he give the plague to Egypt? He didn't give him AIDS, though. Where in the Bible do you read about syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, herpes. Uh, a, uh, what, what else have we got? HIV. Hey, uh, HIV. Right. Genital warts. What do you read about that in the Bible? 
You don't. You don't. But God said all these diseases, because those are diseases, right? And all these plagues that are not written in the Bible, He will give to our people. Right. Who in the who in this earth has the highest rates of STDs? What people? What population? Blacks and Hispanics. Real. We lead that. You know why? Because we don't honor marriage. Real. We want to sleep down with every women want to sleep down with every man and every man want to sleep down with every woman. And so guess what happened? You pass around diseases. God said if you break my 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 law of marriage and you go outside of that, I'm going to judge you as a nation of people. That's why the blacks and Hispanics we we uh, uh we, we 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 deal with those type of diseases and stuff like that because we don't have we do not have the fear of God, right? That's what happens in our communities. So, sis, that's why I said, I'm telling you, boyfriend and girlfriends, they lay down with each other. And guess what? You guys argue, y'all already off on a bad start because y'all not, y'all not proving each other, dealing with each other based off what God says. Y'all is truly lust, I'm telling you straight. So guess what? Y'all gonna lay down with each other, right? And then one day he's gonna get mad, he's gonna leave you. And God forbid he leaves you with a baby, because guess what that makes you now? A single, a, a, a mom that got to raise a kid by herself, Isaiah 3 and 12. Yeah. Now, does God talk about women raising children by themselves? Does God talk about that? You, you, you grew up with both your parents? Uh, no. Who you grew up with? Mom. Your mom? Your pops? Mom. Your mom? Where's your, where was your father at? Uh, you don't know. Right, what about you? Uh, foster kid, but foster kid? my grandma okay. raised me. Your grandma raised you, okay. And then you did grow up with your parents, right? And your father passed, oh. okay. But hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta take this. I'm All right, sorry. Isaiah 3 and 12. Watch this, watch this. This is another judgment, right? Read that. For, listen, for the simple fact that doing boyfriend and girlfriend and not honoring marriage, look what happens to our community. Isaiah 3 and 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Read, yeah. as for my people. As for my people, the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read, children are their oppressors. Who oppresses our people? Is it the older people in our communities? That yeah, who's over here causing chaos in our communities and stuff like that? Is it the older people or who? It's it, it's both. It's the young and the It's the younger generation, most of them. Yeah. The teenagers, the 13 year old, 14 year old, 16 year old, 21 year old, 22 year old, they're around going in these gangs in, 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 in the ghettos and they, they're the ones that are going killing each other, shooting each other, selling drugs to each other. Right. Right? That's what happened in our communities of black and Hispanics. Read that again. As for my people, huh? children are their oppressors. Huh? And women, read it again. As for my people, read. children are their oppressors. Read. And women rule over them. Wait, 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 wait. Who rules over them? And women rule over them. Who rules over them? And women rule over them. So the reason why the, these little kids, these bad kids out here that, who oppress us, that are moving like that is because they're being raised by single parent mothers. Read, read. Women are raising them by themselves. It's not supposed to be like that. God designed it for kids to go up with their mother and their father. Yes, but a lot of times the father's not in the picture. You know why? He laid down with the mother. He said, I don't want to deal with this commitment, and I'm gone. Yes. That's why God said you have to get married, get papers, legally. That boyfriend and girlfriend stuff is going to, if you keep doing that, we're going to have that right there. Back, uh, give me, no, give me uh, uh, first Ezra 5 and uh, 8, second Ezra 5 and 8. Right, we're showing y'all what happens in our black communities. Y'all gotta understand the Bible is our history book. The Bible is the book of life. This is the only thing that's gonna clean our neighborhoods up. We gotta understand, yo, we the Israelites, everything they taught us to us in Christianity are lies. Our lies. We gotta get out of those churches and start keeping the God's laws and commandments as Israelites. You understand what I'm saying? Right? Bible. I mean, if you read it, Christians and Catholics, they have these idols, right. images of, but yet if you open the Bible and you read it, God says, what did he make man out of? Dust. Right. I ain't never seen dirt white. Right. So why are they showing a picture of a white man with straight hair and blue right, eyes right. when he says his hair was as wool and as and his feet was burnt as grass? Uh -huh. It's a, it's an it's a image of a black person. Right, right. And I know my uncle teaches me. Right, right. Second answer <laughs> five and eight. I'm going to show you something. Second answer. Because you said something nice about the hair, right? <laughs> I'm gonna show you, Bri hey, Brianna, don't go nowhere. Watch, watch this, go ahead. Second Ezra, chapter five, verse eight. Three. There shall be a confusion also in many places. So in many places, confusion, meaning God's laws and commandments are not being taught to our people the right way. We're the ones coming out and showing our people the truth out of the Bible, read. And the fire shall be up, sent out again. Uh -huh. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Uh -huh. And menstruous women. And menstruous women, wicked women, read. Shall bring forth Monsters. Those monsters are talking about those children that they have. Those children they have with a dude, a no good Negro, who lays with him and he leaves and now she got to raise him and she raised them all crazy. 
He's raised up to be effeminate and emotional. He's raised up to be to hate his people, right? And do the same thing that his father that he never met, he does the same thing. They, that's what happens. That's why we got monsters in our community. That goes all the way back to us, sis. Boyfriend and girlfriend. Dealing with stuff like that. We can't be doing that, sis. You understand what I'm saying? We gotta go about if, if God said it's not right for a man or a woman to be alone, right? You understand what I'm saying? So marriage is a good thing. It's good that you wanna be married. Right? A lot of sisters, they don't wanna get married. That's out of order. Y'all supposed to be married. Y'all supposed to get married. Get, uh, marry young. Have children. But you gotta go about doing it the right way. Or God's gonna judge us as a nation of people. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Oh!